everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm working in this traveler's notebook from Felicity Jane and I'm just going to do kind of an art journal style spread. Um, I've done a couple entries. This notebook is prayers and favorite kind of um, just good thoughts uh, that I'm collecting and it's actually a gift for someone in my family. And a while ago I had stamped the word change and that alpha is from um, Stampin' Up, as are the little butterfly and toadstool down there, and um, I, then I like abandoned this, and I walked away from it for six months. So now I have my Distress Oxide inks, and I decided to come back and fill in the background for this page. So I'm starting off with a couple of um, just sort of like reds and pinks and uh, yellows. It's Abandoned Coral, Picked Raspberry, and Wild Honey. And I'm going to apply these all over with my foam, you know, my mini ink blending tools. And I'm kind of starting out with a little bit of a light hand. I want it to be lighter around that word in the center and then a little darker around the edges. So you can see I didn't go over those letters uh, too much at all. And now I'm flicking some water on it, just putting a little water into my hands and using my hands to flick water droplets to get that Distress Ink to react a little bit and to create some texture. Now let that sit for a minute. I was, You can see I was dabbing off the letters because I didn't want to make those bleed. I wanted those to stay crisp. And then I'm just taking some paper towel after that sits and does its thing and I'll blot up the excess. And I do a couple rounds of this because um, until I get the look that I'm going for. Uh, I keep kind of just adding a little bit more water and then dabbing up the extra and it gives me a nice little layer of texture. Um, as I mentioned, those images that are already there are from Stampin' Up. I will try to link all the products that I have used down below. Um, and I really, when I put those there, I, I knew what I wanted this page to say in terms of the quote, but I really had no clue what I was doing with the background. So like I said, I walked away from it for such a long time and then picked this back up again. And now I'm adding in the background after the fact, just a little different different um, strategy for me. So I'm grabbing this um, texture, like layering stencil, I believe he calls them, from Tim Holtz. And I wanna add, I wanna add some texture here with just another layer of color and sort of this pretty design. So I'm taking some acrylic paint and I actually thinned it out a little bit with water and I'm using a piece of cut and dry foam but you could use a foam applicator or anything that you have. And I'm just dabbing a little bit, very, very little. I don't know if you can see up on the on my craft sheet up there to the right. I spread it out real thin on my craft sheet. And I'm just using a tiny bit to get a little texture on my page in various places. And then I have, this is a stencil from Martha Stewart Crafts. And I liked these daisies. I wanted them to be very subtle. I don't want them to be focal points. I want them to be in the background. So I start out with a little bit of the Wild Honey ink, and I'm just using that foam applicator to dab a little bit of that through the stencil. And you can see it, it's pretty, um, it's very subtle at first. It's almost like hard to see on camera, but I'm gonna go back over it with the picked raspberry just in the center, and that makes it pop a little more but without bringing it into the foreground. Uh, so I like that better. And hopefully, hopefully you can see the difference on camera. And then I'm choosing um, the same stencil and I'm putting this kind of behind my word there. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna use the yellow ink all the way around. And I'm a little careful not to really smudge up my letters. Um, I'm going kind of light handed around the letters. And then I'll add put the stencil right back on top and add a layer of picked raspberry in the center to give me that a little dimension. And then down the bottom left, I went with the bigger uh, stencil, but I used the exact same technique. So that gave me another kind of layer of interest on this page. I liked the idea that the flowers sort of tied in with the butterfly and the little um, toadstool there. So now I have another set from Stampin' Up. This is one of my absolute favorite sets. It's good for tons of different um, applications, but it's this gorgeous grunge, and I'm going to use this 
I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a whole bunch of like jaggedy, distressed lines, like almost like um, scrape marks. And I am um, dipping this, I think I'm using abandoned coral. And I tested it off on my sheet to the left there just to kind of see how it would come out. And I'm just putting this in various places, um, sometimes vertical, sometimes horizontal, but I am keeping them kind of at right angles to each other. I'm not, I'm not making any diagonal lines with it. And I think that adds just a little structure. And I'm just putting that in various places throughout the page. And then another stamp in the same set, you can see it up on the left there. It looks like a little ink blot, like, um, you know, just sort of a messy little ink blot. And I'm using that, now I'm actually putting it on a mount because it's a small stamp. And I'm just using the Wild Honey ink and I am putting that in a couple places. You can see it behind the H and then um, up above the C off to the left there. And um, it adds a cool little touch. Because there's a pigment quality to this Distress ink, I have been kind of um, drying a little bit in between layers. You don't need a ton of heat, but just a little bit uh, helps to kind of set that ink. So I'm grabbing another Stampin' Up! set called By the Tide. I love this beautiful set. Uh, I've used it in card making. But there's a very pretty script in it. Um, I, I do this step. It's extremely hard to see on camera. And after the ink sort of settles in, it's actually kind of hard to see in real life. So you could totally skip this step because I'm not sure how much it shows up. But I'm trying to give you a close-up so you can see the little um, scripty. It shows up, you know, obviously better on the dark because I stamped it in white. You can see the little scripty um, stamp there. But you could certainly skip that step because I'm not sure how much impact it has on the end of the project. But in general, all I'm trying to accomplish here is to get a lot of subtle layers of interest going on in the background just to make my page interesting and pretty to look at. And um, I think, you know, I think it turned out the way I was intending it to. I was pretty happy. So at this point, I'm looking down at my um, butterfly there, which is just sort of jumping out at me because it is so white on the page. So I'm just going to use a little wild honey ink with a little water and paintbrush and fill that in. I have typed out my quote, which is the serenity prayer. And um, it is just something that I think applies to so much and um, just rings true in so many situations. So that is what I intended when I stamped the word change on here, but now I'm filling in the rest of the quote and I am just uh, typing it out on printer paper, cutting it into strips, and I will adhere it onto the page. So before I stick it down, I got it all set up, but then before I stuck it down, I decided one more little layer, I'm gonna add some white splatters. I'm going back to that acrylic paint. I'm going to dilute it again with a little water and get a paintbrush. Um, and then you kind of have to play with how thin you want this. If you want it, if you want it a little more thin, you add a little more water. But if you get too much water, those white droplets get a little translucent and they don't show up as much. So um, you just got to play around with it and test. Um, but I did want some white splatters in the background. And then I'll come back to... Um, those word strips. And if you don't know the serenity prayer, it says, Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, and the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Uh, so I think, as I said before, I just think that's a beautiful sentiment and a, uh, something that I want to always be thinking about. So that's why I chose to include it here in this book. And I'm just using my two-way glue pen on the back of these uh, strips. And I've sort of lined them up somewhat from like left to right. You know, your eye kind of wants to naturally go from the top left uh, over to the bottom right. So why fight it? Uh, those two bottom strips are going to cross the seam, you know, the center line of the book. So I am going to snip them just so that they don't bunch up there at the crease. And then I'll just do my best to line them up. So I'm sorry I'm getting my head in the shot. But uh, I really wanted to make it look like they were one continuous strip without getting um, getting bunched up in there. So I'm just getting the last one adhered. And I did not incorporate the stamped word change 
into the white strips. Like I, t I typed the quote out in full. Um, the change is just meant to be like the theme, I guess, is why I put that in the middle. That's not actually read as part of the quote. Um, to, to sort of finish those off and tie in the black that I have in that stamped image down in the lower right corner, or those stamped images, I'm just using a black pen to, I think this is American Crafts Precision Pen, and I'm using that to outline the quote, which pops it out from the background just a little bit, and as I said, it ties in the black from the stamping. And then I will use um, a different width of pen to go around the entire uh, perimeter of the page, and I just freehand that. Um, I don't really care if it's if it's perfect or matched up. I just think it adds a nice little border, kind of frames out the page. I'm noticing that my the little polka dots on my um, on my mushroom just sort of look unfinished. They don't look like they're uh, intended to be white. It looks like I skipped something, so I just colored them in with a little yellow marker um, to tie it in with the rest of the page. Now I've got this, you know, down below on that, in that toadstool, I had colored that in a much deeper pink, almost red shade, and that was before I started doing this page. As you know, I did that first. So I was feeling like it was just sort of standing out on its own, and I wanted to tie that depth of color in a little bit more. So I grabbed um, like a dark, kind of raspberry-ish marker. This is a Faber-Castell pit pen. And I'm just adding a little bit of shadow on these letters. And I'm not super careful about making it perfect. I'm just wanting to put a little of that deep color in. And then I'm also, um, you can see I'm just pointing to the three spots. So now I have the dark, the bottom right, along those letters I have a tiny touch of it. And then up in the upper left on that tab, I just ran a couple lines of that darker color also, and it just, you know, it just makes it look like it's not dangling out there by itself to have that darker pink, almost red uh, looking mushroom toadstool thing. Um, so I'm feeling mostly done at this point, but on that tab up there in the corner, I wanted to add uh, some detail as well, and again, bring a little more black in. So I use this tiny little Alpha Tiles, I think it's called Alpha Tiles, I'll look that up, but it's from Tailored Expressions and uh, just a tiny little block letter that says change, again, you know, just reinforcing that theme. And then for, um, for a little dimension and final touches, I grabbed a few puffy uh, dot stickers and some enamel dots and a couple of the puffy ones were sort of the perfect shape and size to go on those polka dots on the toadstool. And then some of these enamel ones in the, in the same like pinks and oranges and yellows as my background, I'm just sort of scattering around my page. Um, you can see I put them a kind of in conjunction with where my flowers were so that I've got the visual triangle reinforced. So I'm just picking it up to give it a final uh, look. I do grab my white gel, pan, gel pen to um, outline those letters up on the tab, just to bring a little white up there and brighten that up. Um, and other than that, I am calling this project done, and I'm just really happy with all the texture and the interest that, and how bright and cheerful and wonderful it is. I'm just super happy. So here's some close up. Uh, still shots you can see of all that texture I was able to achieve and the beautiful colors and just what a beautiful job those distress oxide inks do. So I hope you had fun watching me pull this together and um, I'll be back soon. Have a great day.